and the filly goes home better. Hellhound won it three quarters of a length, Port Elbert. Skywolf kicks, Skywolf finds from Jaconi. Skywolf holds on, Skywolf won it by a short nick. Hello everyone and welcome to my Caulfield Race Day preview for this week. I can't wait to get stuck into it, a big day's racing. Let's get on with race number one. Race one is a two-year-old handicap over the 1,200 metres. Maximilius is the short price, $2.50 favourite, just ahead of Liberty Steps at $3.80 for Ben and J.D. Hayes, the last start winner. We're going to take a look at a run of Merchant Princess was two runs back in the Blue Diamond Stakes at Group 1 level. I chose this because this was the last time Merchant Prince was at 1,200 metres and also at Caulfield, so this was the same track and distance that it races on the weekend. Of course, on the weekend, it's an easier race than this race. It did extremely well here. Brett Preble takes the ride on the weekend. The only query slightly is gate number one, but if it can get off the fence, I reckon it's the one to beat. It's, I reckon it's the one that's most suited to this race, apart from the gate. So I think it's over the odds at $7. Maximilius in for second. First up, um, has improvement out of its first preparation. Patrick Maloney, 54.5 kilos, can definitely win. Lincoln Square will be putting itself on speed. John McNeil rides for Greg Ure it's a good chance and Liberty Steps one last start at Caulfield so it can't be dismissed at the same track and distance but I'm with Merchant Prince in race number one at Caulfield Race 2 is a Phillies and Mares benchmark, 78 over the 1,600 metres. Princess Rain is, is the $3.70 favourite, $4.60 for both White Hibiscus and Deny Knowledge in Express. This was a last start replay of Made of Iron at Cranbourne. This was its first up run. This was in a benchmark 64 over 1,300 metres, so it rises up in class and up in distance to the 1,600 metres. It's pretty good second up. Um... It draws gate one, so it'll have to get off the fence, but John McNeil's got the 55.5 kilos, so I'm pretty sure that it should be able to get off the fence, um, and it should be giving itself every chance in the straight with clear luck in running. We'll be settling on pace to midfield somewhere around there. I reckon it's the one to beat. Uh, White Hibiscus him for second. will be getting back, but charging home. Not sure Caulfield's its track, but we'll see what happens. Princess Rain is I was more than happy to take on at the short price. I'd love to see it do it first before I could take it on top. And deny knowledge him for fourth for Mick Kent. But I'm with Maid of Iron in the second at Caulfield. Hopefully it can win. Race three is a Phillies and Mares benchmark 78 over the 1,100 metres. On this page, we've got Little Stevie at $7 and Bella is at $6. $4.60 for Sugartown and $5.50 for Dance to Dubai. But this was Little Stevie's last start effort behind Clemenceau at Caulfield. This was in a benchmark 78, so it's sort of comes down in class to a Phillies and Mares race. Um, yeah, this horse is going pretty well, though. Gate three, it's not great, but it'll be able to get off the fence, I'm pretty sure. Josh Richards claims two, which will be ideal. Um, yeah, I reckon this run would have topped it off for this assignment on the weekend. I reckon it can get clear like in running, and it only got beaten by Clemenceau on that occasion, which is a really good horse. Um, I didn't know who to put on top here. I had Bella a very, very close second. It was a great winner last tart for Blake McDougall. Um, we'll be getting back but charging home. Sugartown's drawn very wide, but John McNeil takes the ride and it's going well. And Dance to Dubai, um, Gate 5 will be on speed, giving itself every chance. But I'm with Little Stevie in Race 3 at Caulfield. Hopefully it can win. Race four is a benchmark 78 over the 1,200 metres. Sig Positano is the favourite, but it's a wide open race. It's the $4.80 favourite. Uh, $7 was next best up there, but uh, Sig Positano, this was its last start effort down the Flemington Strait. Um, this was in the same class and distance as what it faces on the weekend. Billy Egan took the ride on this occasion, and um, it got pretty close um, to the uh, winner, which was B Hunter. Now Mick D takes the ride. Gate 6, Sig Positano will be hopefully midfield, somewhere near there. And I reckon it's good enough to win this. It's such a consistent horse. And I'm ha ha happy to put it on top. So 15 to win on Sig Positano. Plays a trail in for second. Kiramar and David Deuce has trained this horse. Comes down from Sydney. Not sure why they're bringing it down from Sydney. John McNeil takes the ride. Good chance. I thought Love Sensation was over the odds. Draws a touch wide, but I think it's over the odds. And Terbium in for fourth. But I'm with Sig Positano in the fourth race at Caulfield. The ever-consistent horse. 
Race 5 is a benchmark 100 over the 1100 metres. The favourite is It's Our Time at $3.30, just ahead of Starry Legend at $4.40, and then $8.50 for the next best runner, Ocean Beyond. But this was It's Our Time's last start run behind Extreme Warrior at Caulfield. It's second up on the weekend. This was its first up run, as I've already said. Um, it draws gate 7 on the weekend. I'm hoping it can get back and charge home off what looks to be a genuine speed. Um, loves the 1100 metres. This was a good run. Um, took a good one to beat it. So I'm happy with It's Our Time on top. And I got 20 the win on it. I'm pretty confident in It's Our Time. Uh, Star and Legend second. It's on the week back up after a dominant win last week at Sandown. It can definitely win getting back onto a firmer surface as well. Ranting I thought was over the odds. First up usually does pretty well and usually races in good uh, company. And Sword of Mercy in for fourth. But I'm with It's Our Time in the fifth race at Caulfield. Race 6 is a 3-year-old handicap over the 1,200 metres and Clemenceau is the short price favourite at $2.25. Scissor Step is at $5.50 and $7.00 for Squid Game. But this was Clemenceau's last start effort at Caulfield and we've already looked at this replay for Little Stevie. Um, but we're going to take a look at Clemenceau now. Clemenceau is 4 from 5 and the only time it's been beaten is when it's been on a really bogged heavy track. So it's 4 from 4 on good ground yet to be beaten. Gate 5. Jamie Neal should put it on speed to midfield. Uh, I think off pace is the word for that matter. Um, and it should be charging home late and getting the victory. I'm pretty confident in Clemenceau. Second up, fitter for this uh, assignment. And really only has to beat Scissor Step, and I reckon it's the winner. I've got 60 the win on Clemenceau. I'm pretty confident in his chances. Scissor Step in for second. Gate 1 will need luck for a big horse like it. Don't think Gate 1's ideal, um, but I've got it in for second. Linus Legend was a good last start winner in a benchmark 70 at Bendigo, so it has to be some sort of a chance. And Corkscrew, um, getting back around a bend will suit it. But I'm with Clemenceau in the sixth. Race 7 is a benchmark 100 over the 1,600 metres. Uh, the short price favourite is Uncle Bryn at $2.10. Skyman is at $8 and we got $9 for Imperial Lad. This was Skyman's first up assignment um, at Caulfield. This was in the Vic Handicap won by Ayrton. Um, and it only finished two lengths off the leader here. It was a real eye catcher late. Craig Newitt rode on this occasion. Damien Thornton, its regular rider, goes back on, which is a plus. Um, I probably prefer to see this horse at Flemington, but I don't mind it at Caulfield. Um, it's pretty good at the 1,600 metres. Um, second up, it's always very good. So, um, yeah, I was more than happy to put it on top. Um, and as you can see, it's really roaring through the line here, wanting 1,600. I was more than happy to take the $8 about Skyman rather than the $2.10 about Uncle Bryn. I think Uncle Bryn's just a tad short. John McNeil, 53.5 kilos, all signs point to a win, and it probably will win, but I was more than happy to take Skyman at the price. Man, Kyan, you should have seen its first up run last preparation. Absolutely outstanding. If it can reproduce that, it's a good chance. An Imperial lad in for fourth, but I'm with Skyman in the seventh. Race 8 is a three-year-old handicap over the 2,000 metres. The claimant is the $4.20 favourite. Elza Me is at $5.50. We got $7 for Yaffet, um, and that's about it. So this was Emperor of France's last start uh, win at Ballarat. Um, this was in a benchmark 64 over the 2,000 metres, so it's won at the distance before. Um, now, in a race where there doesn't look to be a lot of speed, I'm hoping with the 52 kilos on the weekend, they can really push forward and be on pace. And I'm expecting that they go at a slow speed, so I'm hoping it's a sit and sprint. And this horse is the right spot at the right time. It's a pretty big price, um, but I'm willing to take the risk in a race where it's wide open. I'm with Emperor of France. Mick Price, Michael Ken Jr. and Alana Kelly usually do well, so $14 I think is over the odds. Yaffet, um, I probably would have put it on top if it hasn't got gate 19. I'll have to get right back off. Well, what might be a slow speed isn't ideal. The claimant, Brett Preble takes the ride, is the favourite, um, and I don't disagree with that. And Black Comb, also a good chance. I'm with Emperor of France. Race 9 is a benchmark 100 over the 2,000 metres. Milford is the $3.60 favourite, $5 for Flash R. $9 up there for Secret Blaze as well. But we're going to take a look at Flash R's uh, last start effort at Flemington. Um, this was in a pretty good race. It's probably similar to what it faces here. Uh, this race was an open handicap. 
and it had Daniel Moore with the 54.5 kilos. Gets Sean McNeil on the weekend with the 55.5 kilos. I think third up, up to 2,000 metres looks ideal. Just needs clear luck off of gate number one, and I reckon it's right in the game. So more than happy to put Flash R on top on Saturday in the last, just ahead of Milford. Good winner Milford last um, start in the Easter Cup. Not sure how good that form stands up. It was an on-pace race, but we'll see how it goes. No effort can definitely win. 2,000 metres core field looks ideal, and don't doubt Dory might struggle to get the 2,000 metres, um, but you never know what it'll do. I'm with Flash R in the last. Good luck uh, at Caulfield on Saturday. I hope you back a winner.